question is, what are your thoughts on alternative energy sources? Well, I definitely think we have to switch to a different way of doing what we're doing. The coal and the oil that is not what you call sustainable, meaning that we cannot keep doing the same thing because we are running out and then we are going to have to change and if we don't start making the move when it finally, like, like for example, uh, you got a, uh, a big tank full of, uh, full of water and it's just you and a few families out there and you're, and you're, you're taking the water and you're, and you're doing fine as long as you keep getting the water. But eventually your, your, your need for it doesn't stop matter of fact your need will only increase and so you keep depleting it so fossil fuels is not renewable it is running out so we have we have to it's not a matter of uh, a choice you we will have to uh, make a choice we will have to make a a, a turnover and it's just a matter of how fast can we do it because many people uh, you know you start talking about renewables and they even deny that we need to switch over at all you know they think there's new things we can figure out and we can just keep doing it and mainly it's because there is so much money and power these corporations that are involved in the oil and the drilling and the processing, there is so much money and power involved that they do not want to switch over. So I think, uh, one, we have to switch over. Uh, two, we, uh, we have to make it where there are more, a lot of people, a lot of corporations, a lot of businesses, and a lot of the decision makers want to see how uh, jobs can be uh, got from these uh, new types of alternatives. So uh, it's important that we invest research into new ways of doing things because it's like you have to start inventing it. You have to start uh, inventing uh, uh, new processes. We have to start having vehicles out there that that are not getting just 20 and 25 miles per, per gallon. You know, they've known how to do it for a long time, but it was like you, you made more money if they were, you know, they were getting so little gas. There was a lot more money to be made. And, you know, it was a incentive not to invest in uh, these vehicles that would get 50 and 60 miles an hour. You know, you ever heard the thing about who killed the electric car? Well, it was it was a deliberate thing. They didn't want an electric car because electric car, you don't need gas. And uh, but now we're in a crisis. We're in a crisis, and some there are some scientists that say hey, if we don't make the move now it's going to be too late and we're just looking for a catastrophe quite frankly so it's not a uh, uh, you kids are living in a very critical time of this planet's history you really really are and matter of fact I expect that the troubles that we are having unfortunately we're going to leave them to y'all so you kids are the ones who really need to be aware of this because you are the ones who are going to be facing this stuff. Uh, will you scoot back for us one more time? Oh, I, no. Thank you. I uh, know. Um, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> very enthusiastic. So on that note, would you um, talk about um, some of the 
I guess, occurrences that are happening along the coast that um, you think might be related to the deep water. Um, we talked about at the beginning about, um, I think, shrimp that we're finding, or crawfish, uh, I can't remember, sorry, but that uh, with black lungs. Um, so maybe address that. I know that there was, um, we talked about some, we're finding dolphins all along the, the coast of the United States and other countries with uh, washing up dead um, and and then on that same note um, I know that you have looked into a lot about the uh, the muds we've talked about the drilling industry in this class um, and uh, talk to us a little bit of how the evolution of mud from 1900 has turned into the uh, synthetic compounds that are uh, being used in the Gulf today and how maybe those are related I don't well, uh, let me see, oh, uh, the problems we're having now, like, like in my hometown, um, there used to be, it's a fishing town, there used to be 120 shrimp boats. I mean, that's all we did. We were fishermen. Uh, there are probably now two shrimp boats. So there is, it, it's like, all of the fish houses, the fish house I worked at, the fish house, Mr. Waghorn, Mr. Waghorn used to work uh, for me at the fish house. And, uh, and they're no longer there, they're bulldozed. That is because there is no market for the shrimp. The shrimp are, uh, there has, seems to be this, um, this, uh, 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 crisis within the seafood industry. I know in the Gulf of Mexico there is what they call, uh, and even this was NOAA, this was uh, National Oceanic and Ocean Administration. Uh, they have been uh, keeping track of all the dolphins that are dying and they call it a unusual mortality event, meaning there's dolphins dying all over the Gulf, and they're related to the um, the oil spill out there, the Deepwater Horizon. And I know a lot, a, a lot of politicians, a lot of uh, industry. When when that huge oil spill happened, you know that there was a lot of interest. There was a lot of media when it was leaking, but the minute it was plugged, it was like the media went on to something else, it's like the newest, the hottest, like keep moving, and and the, your own government wants it to end. They, they, they don't want to ask any more questions. Matter of fact, almost a year, one year after that one of the biggest oil spills this country has ever had, one year later, and uh, uh, BP was putting, you know, they hired their own scientists, and they were saying, "What well, the while the Gulf is fine, it's like it is the fish are coming back, and we don't see any oil, and uh, and you know what those fishermen need to do is just go back fishing." Well, what the fishermen were, first of all, the fishermen had been hired by BP to pull up the oil and they were getting sick because they were out there with these big rubber booms and instead of shrimp nets they had these big rubber booms and they were pulling in the oil and they and and the company did not want the fishermen to wear masks over their face because they were bringing breathing in all this they didn't want them to wear the masks because the media was around and they did not want them to show fishermen wearing masks on their face. They didn't want them to think there was anything dangerous about it. If you ever happen to come around gasoline or hit your head over a bucket of oil, you know it's got a lot of hydrocarbons and you breathe in that and it can be very damaging. And so now you have fishing communities especially fishermen that were pulling in the oil, they are sick, 
you have a crisis in the shrimp. The the amount of shrimp has like uh, been dramatically reduced. They're pulling up crabs with oil in their bodies. The dolphins are dying, and the uh, the deep coral reefs down below uh, they're being